I'm such a male. I'm so straight that anything that's gay that I see, I have to call attention to it so people know that I don't like it. But what you don't see you're doing is counterintuitive. Actually, we're looking at you now like, oh, so what else gay you see? I'm going to be watching you, 50. So we got the latest in the Dr. Dre and Nicole, his wife. Um, so apparently she now wants to subpoena three alleged mistresses of um, Dr. Dre. I think it was like um, Jillian Spears, um, Kelly Anderson and Crystal Rogers. So he wants to subpoena, she wants to su subpoena all three of them to come to court to testify basically um, to the the, mar the marital misconduct, the cheating, all of that stuff. And actually, you know, all three of them have lawyered up to fight against the subpoena. Of course, Dr. Dre is a billionaire, so he's going to be able to support anybody who is going to help him fight against whatever you know you're throwing at him of course he probably had marital affair with them and that's allegedly i don't want to get myself wrapped up in anything illegal but it goes without saying of course he may have had some some dealings with them but do you think they're going to go to court versus reap the benefits of dr dre i think not so i don't think that's going to be a good um a good alley for her um and it's so sad because she really is fighting this and you can tell if you really pay attention to a lot of different lawsuits and settlements and even just google divorce settlements um billion dollar divorce settlements you'll see a lot of times it's the lawyers who are amping um these spouses up to really go after um the other spouse because they know that there's going to be a big payday so i'm going to stay tuned to this um, I have no skin in the game. I don't, you know, honestly, I don't care which, who, you know, how this goes, how the cookie crumbles. But what I do, because and the reason I feel that way is because she simply is not losing anything. He's still paying her bills, taking care of her. She's living the lavish lifestyle. So I don't see what she's trying to get other than ruin the man's career, stain and tarnish his image and, you know, make him broke. So we will stay tuned to that story. Weird ass Moni Slaughter. So Moni Slaughter posted a picture on her Instagram and clear as day, if you if you have two eyes that 2020 vision, even if you got 2019, 1920, 1010 vision, you'd be able to tell she's doing something to her skin. She's completely bleached her skin um but she went on to say that it wasn't bleaching she's endorsing a certain type of product a different product and the difference between skin bleaching and skin cleaning um is the fact that one has different chemicals girl i don't care what you say and what you put on it you were not like that a couple years ago when you were broke um trapping for a little fizz so what is so with all these people bleaching their skin? It is nothing wrong with having a beautiful pigment, like for real, for real. Um, and for her to do something like that when she's not even popping, now you're gonna have all of these people looking at you like, girl, you look sick. Like, uh, save the PR stunt for someone else who can deal with the, the backlash. So now she's getting backlash from everybody. They're like, why are you bleaching your skin? She's now having to explain when she's not bleaching her skin. We'll see. I'm gonna keep watching your page to see what you what you got out there. Um, uh, so Tory Lanez, you know, when people are going through things such as Tory Lanez being accused of shooting someone near and dear to you, someone who's like a, a major hip hop player in the game right now, you typically go low on the radar. But unfortunately, Tory Lanez, you know, he's in the, I think he's in the height of his career or he's still trying to build his career. I don't know where he's at in the scale of his career, but he still wants to maintain a presence and he still wants to be, you know, out there at the forefront, have some, some, some sort of notoriety. Um, you can see it clear as day. So he has this thing called quarantine radio that he hosts on Instagram where he has an IG live. He's playing, I think he's playing music and he has different people come on and come up and someone got in the comments and said, um, <laughs> you shot Meg or something like that. Why you keep lying saying you didn't shoot Meg? And he was, you know, he was pretty much offended by it. And he, you know, went on to say something along the lines of this is false information. Um, I don't know why, you know, this is false, this is false. I don't know why people are putting this out there. She's my friend. Um, I treat her as a friend, even if she don't look at me as a friend. And it just sounds fucking weird. Every time he talks about the situation, it just feels like he's not saying something like, 
okay, yeah, she's your friend, but did you shoot her or did you not? Did you have the gun in your hand? Did you not? Did anyone, like those are simple questions that you can say yes or no to, which leads me to believe that there was some interaction, some exchange of a bullet, a gun, a foot, a hand. Whose foot, whose hand, whose gun, we don't know, but it leads us to believe that you were involved. And until those questions are like clear as day, you're still gonna be in the mix of this. So little Rodney. Little Rodney, I first heard about this story watching Lovely T's channel. Um, she's a YouTuber too. She puts out a lot of great content. The one thing I like about Lovely T is when she drops information, she gives you like the entire historical context of it. And so I had never heard of Little Rodney. I don't really get it. I, I like rap a lot, but I don't go that far into the hood rap. Like I don't go that far down the street. I, I may stop at the corner. <laughs> Like you, I may do NBA Young Boy, Rody Rich, but Lil Rodney, I ain't know nothing about him. So he's a rapper. He's a, a very young rapper. He's 12 years old, and he has a rap sheet, an extensive rap sheet. And in this rap sheet, he started an arson, a fire. He, um, I think he had a possession of a weapon, a gun, but he also shot a one year old. The one year old survived, but he shot the one year old, and so I think he got years of probation. Um, but most recently, I think he went to a, a mall and he was on his phone talking tough and stuff like this. And one of, I'll say an op of his showed up at the mall and um, was talking mess to him. You know, you ain't tough now, you know, beating on his chest in front of the little Rodney. Now this boy is about like this high, yay high. Um, and so the boy um, basically, I think, hit him in the face or they got into like a little kerfuffle and Lil Rodney you know I think he started crying and it was so sad because they the big brother in me was like oh he's a baby leave him alone he doesn't know any better and I'm gonna I'm gonna touch right on why he doesn't know any better in a in a second and so he you know he left the mall he went home and of course Lil Rodney got a beat on his chest he goes now he's on probation from all of his rap sheet he goes on camera with guns and start do 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 where you at now where you at now what's what's going on and i'm like okay and so flash forward he ended up get going to court and the judge sentenced him locked him up there and sentenced him he said he might not release you until 2022 2029 um he told me you might have nine years um the judge has said oh, every time you come to the court for something you always tell me your honor let me out this next time and if i do anything give me the maximum the next time and then the judge said you've done this for the last two times so now here we are you're staying in jail until i decide what i want to do with you um and it's very unfortunate you know he could have gone on and been like a great artist you know a lot of times um rap artists are built out of their trauma and they grow up to be successful people you know Jay-Z isn't the only one, 50 Cent isn't the only one, but you have a lot of these younger artists who are now growing up to be, you know, a very exceptional um, artist. And I like um, Lil Baby. I like Lil Baby a lot. I like his ethic. I like his work ethic. You don't really hear too much drama around him, but he is someone who, you know, came up from the bottom and he is rising. I like his lyrics, his music. I feel it. Um, so Lil Rodney could have been that and, and he was much younger, but his mother that we watched when he was talking to the judge he said he cut his monitor off because he couldn't go to a funeral or he yeah he, didn't yeah. he was supposed to get off that weekend when the funeral was going on but they didn't let him off for some reason and then I'm at work. Yeah, it's so sad. And so many of us have like relatives and we know people like that, you know, who um, are very talented at such a young age. And because they don't see their talent, they get caught up in what's going on now. So this man will be this little boy will be probably in jail until he's 20, 21. And, you know, we might be have moved on since then because he was too young to even make a name for himself. So. Um, I don't even know who to shout out, but you know, Lil Rodney, you'll be in my prayers, especially um, tonight. And I'll, I'll, you know, I hope that, um, I don't even know if I want to say, I hope the judge release you. I hope you are able to go to some, some place where they'll allow you to have some sort of freedom, but you're monitored and you have um, something equal to um, some sort of parental guidance. I'll put it like that. 
Um, oh, so this next one. Oh, baby. Shit. Hold on. Real, real quick. I need that. So, Lil Nas X. Now, Lil Nas X, I don't know for y'all. I'm a Nicki stan. I love Nicki Minaj. I, you know, I'm, I, I, you know, I like all the other female rappers. I don't discredit them, but when it comes to rappers that I, music I enjoy, I enjoy Nicki Minaj. Um, and so, Lil Nas X, before he came out, he ran Nicki Minaj's stand page, and it was a Twitter account. And I think a lot of us knew that he ran it. Um, I think it was a Mirage something. And he, as soon as he came out with his album, he deleted that page and basically discredited Nicki. Now, all, a lot of her fans knew that he was the one behind that. And so they were like, you know, you're a stand of Nicki Minaj. And at the time, he didn't want people to know that, you know, he was because he didn't want them to think he was gay, which would then inhibit or, you know, sort of um, inhibit him from moving into um, the rap industry or the career that he has nowadays. And so you know, flash forward, maybe after he released this record, now he's a gay rapper. So now what, it's okay for him to like Nicki Minaj? So I guess so. So for Halloween, he was Nicki Minaj and Super Bass, the video. Now he was definitely, he gave drag tees all day long. Like, oh my God, <laughs> check that out. But he did it and he got a lot of backlash from a lot of people. Um, Nicki Minaj reposted it on her Instagram of a different of different people who dressed as her for Halloween, but she included him, which meant that you know she supported it. That was her little stamp of it because she had never said anything negative about him. She had never said anything about him, and he went on. You know, Lil Nas went on to do a record with Cardi B and blah blah blah. But he never gave, never said anything about Nicki Minaj. So I think this was his way of saying, you know, I'm sorry, you are the queen. Um, Nas Mirage is what he labeled the picture as. But what's interesting is that, you know, the three, these three men who decided to say something, I just feel like they're gay underneath. They're like extra homo. So the first one, 50 Cent. 50 Cent reposts the picture. He took the time out of his day to repost the picture on Twitter to say, Nicki Minaj, come get your boy. Out of all the shit on Twitter, 50 Cent, you chose that to retweet? Okay, I see you. Trust me. That's what you call machoism. That's what you call. I'm so um, such a male. I'm so straight that anything that's gay that I see, I have to call attention to it. So people know that I don't like it. But what you don't see you're doing is counterintuitive. Actually, we're looking at you now like, oh, so what else gay you see? I'm going to be watching you 50. Second person. And I, I, you know, I like him. He's he's a cutie. Dave East, Dave East reposts the picture on his Instagram with a caption um, from Pop Can, um, from one of Pop Can's song, which called him like a baddie boy, which means a homo um, in Jamaican slur. Um, and my thing again is Dave East, out of all the things you could have posted, you chose to post this picture of Halloween. I'm sure it was a bunch of bad females dressed up for Halloween you could have put on your page, but no. You wanted to point out Lil Nas X. Why? And so Pop Can then decides to, you know, get in on it. And had, he had a little something to say, too. And it's just like, really? You guys, like, you know, I like Pop Can music. I actually did, like, a little dance video to it on my IG. Um, I like Pop Can music. But I realize, like, a lot of these people, sometimes it's not even that they don't it's not it's not even that they you know don't like gay people or not because they may not like gay people but there's so many people in the world that don't like gay people none of them took their opportunity to post it on their page so what why you that's the only thing that i'm interested in why you what about it was interesting to you did you like his shape did it remind you of Nicki minaj did you get aroused did it make you so mad you got Trump saying all kind of shit. Did you, have you posted anything that he's done yet? Okay. So we'll be waiting and I'll be watching. Trust me.